SHO algebraically. And we go back to the Hamiltonian, p squared over 2m plus 1 half m omega squared x hat squared. And what we do is observe that is some sort of sum of squares plus p squared over m um, p squared over m squared omega squared. So sum of two things squared. Now, the idea that we have now is to try to factorize the Hamiltonian. And what do we call factorizing the Hamiltonian? Is when you write your Hamiltonian as the product of two factors, V times W. Well, Actually, that's not quite a factorization. You want kind of the same factor. And not even that. You sort of wanted this be the Hermitian conjugate of that. And if there is a number here, that's OK. Adding numbers to a Hamiltonian doesn't change the problem at all. The energies are all shifted. and. It's just how you're defining the zero of your potential. It's doing nothing else but that. So factorizing the Hamiltonian is writing it in this way as V dagger V. And uh, you would say, why V dagger V? Uh, why not V V dagger or V V or V dagger V dagger? Well. Uh, you want the Hamiltonian to be Hermitian. And this thing is Hermitian. You may recall that AB dagger, the Hermitian conjugate of AB dagger, is B dagger A dagger. So the Hermitian conjugate of this product is V dagger times the dagger of V dagger. Dagger of a dagger is the same operator. When you dagger it twice, you get the same. So this is Hermitian. V dagger times V is a Hermitian operator. And that's a very good thing. So, and there will be great simplifications if you ever succeed in writing a Hamiltonian this way. You've gone 90% of the way to solving the whole problem. It has become infinitely easier, as you will see in a second, if you could just write this factorization. Um, so uh, if you had x minus x squared minus this, you would say, oh, clearly that's a squared minus b squared is a minus b times a plus b. But there's no such thing here. It's almost like a squared plus b squared. And how do you sort of factorize it? Well, actually, since we have complex numbers, this could be a minus ib times a plus ib. That is correctly a squared plus b squared, and uh, complex numbers are supposed to be friends in quantum mechanics. So having i's, there's probably no complication there. So let's try that. Um, I'll, I'll write it. So here we have x squared plus b squared over m squared omega squared. And I will try to write it as x minus i p hat over m omega times x plus i p hat over m omega. 
let's put a question mark before we are so sure that this works. Well, uh, some things work. Um, the only danger here is that these are operators and they don't commute. And when we do this, in one case, in the cross term, the A is to the left of B. But in the other problem, the B is to the left of A. So we may run into some trouble. This may not be exactly true. So what is this? This x with x, fine, x squared. This term p with p is correct, plus p squared over m squared omega squared. But then we get plus i over m omega, x with p, minus p with x. So the x p commutator. So factorization of operators in quantum mechanics can miss a few constants because things don't commute. So the cross terms give you that. And this xp is ih bar. So this whole term will give us the following statement. What we've learned is that uh, what we wanted, x squared plus p squared over 2 over m squared omega squared, is equal to, um, so I'm equating this line to the top line, is equal to x hat <coughs> minus i p hat over m omega times x hat plus i p hat over m omega. And then, from this whole term, i with i is minus, so it's h bar over m omega. So I'll put it in, um, it's a minus h bar over m omega, so here is plus um, h bar over m omega times the unit factor, if you wish. Okay. So uh, this is very good. In fact, we can call this v dagger and this v. Better call this v first and then ask what is the dagger of this operator. Now you may remember that how did we define daggers? If you have phi with psi and the inner product, the integral of phi star psi, if you have an a psi here, that's equal to a dagger phi um, psi. So an operator is acting on the second wave function, moves as a dagger into the first wave function. And you know that x moves without any problem. x is Hermitian. We've discussed that p is Hermitian as well, moves to the other side. So the conjugate, the Hermitian conjugate of this operator is x, the p remains p, but the i becomes minus i. So this is correct. If this second operator is called v, the first operator should be called v dagger. That is a correct statement. One is the dagger of the other one. So the Hamiltonian is one half m omega squared times this sum of squares, which is now equal to v dagger v plus h bar over m omega. So h hat is now one half m 
omega squared v dagger v plus a sum which is plus one half h bar omega. So we did it, we factorized the Hamiltonian v dagger v and uh, this is uh, quite useful. So the v's however have units and you probably are aware that we like things without units so that we can see the units better. This term is perfectly nice. It's a number added to the Hamiltonian. It's h omega. It has units of energy, but this is still a little messy. So let's try to clean up those v's. And the way I'll do it is by computing their commutator to begin with. So let's compute the commutator of V and V dagger and see how much is that commutator. It's a simple commutator because it involves factors of X and P. So it's the commutator of X plus IP over M omega, that's V, with x minus <laughs> ip over m omega. So the first x talks only to the second p, so it's minus i over m omega xp. And for the second case, you have plus i over m omega p with x. This is i h bar, and this is minus i h bar. Each term will contribute the same. i times minus i is plus, so h bar over m omega times a 2. That is v dagger v. v v dagger. 2h bar over m omega. So, time to change names a little bit. Let's do the following. Let's put square root of m omega over 2h bar v and square root of m omega over 2h bar v dagger commute to give you 1. That's a, a nice commutator. It's one a number or an operator with the same thing. So I brought the square root into each one. And we'll call the first term, because of reasons we'll see very soon, uh, uh, the destruction operator A square root of m omega over 2h bar v it's called the destruction operator and the dagger is going to be a dagger some people put hats in them um, I sometimes do too uh, there's a tire 2h bar v dagger and those A and A daggers are now unit free and you can check that because they have the same units and A with A dagger is the nicest commutator. One. Is A a Hermitian operator? Is it? No, A is not Hermitian. A dagger is different from A. A is basically this thing, A dagger is this thing. So, not Hermitian. So, we're going to work with these operators. They're non Hermitian. I, I need to write the following equations. It's very, 
you know, it, it takes a little bit of writing, but uh, they should be recorded. They will always make it to the formula sheet. And it's the basic relation between A, A dagger, and X and P. A is this. A dagger, as you know, is X minus I P hat over M omega. Since I'm copying, I better copy them right. Uh, X, on the other hand, is square root of H bar over 2 M omega. A plus A dagger, and P is equal to I square root of M omega H bar over 2, A dagger minus A. So these four equations, A and A dagger in terms of X and P and vice versa, are important. Uh, they will show up all the time. Here are the things to know. This A and A dagger is visibly clear that one is the complex, uh, the Hermitian conjugate of the other. Here, X is Hermitian, and indeed, A plus A dagger is Hermitian. When you do the Hermitian conjugate of A plus A dagger, the first A becomes an A dagger, the second A with another Hermitian conjugation becomes A. So, this is Hermitian. But P is Hermitian, and here we have A dagger minus A. This is not Hermitian, it changes sign. Well, the I is there for that reason, and makes it Hermitian. So there they are, they're Hermitian, they're good. 